Hello everyone, um, welcome back. This um, video today is um, the, the beginning of Specialist Maths of Dynamics. And sorry about the alarm in the background, I live in the bush here. <laughs> um, that's the fire alarm. Um, yeah, so this is the first video uh, for dynamics. And uh, it's all about forces and how, how, how things work uh, due to gravity and um, forcing on each other and that sort of thing. So we're going to look at that. So firstly, um, force is a vector. And so that means it has a magnitude, so how, how far it does, and a direction, so it's a vector. Um, so we want to know which way it's pushing and how hard it's pushing, basically. Um, we measure force with newtons, um, always, and newtons go together with kilograms, meters, and seconds. And so that's all our sort of standard uh, units when we're doing these types of problems. Um, so if you're figuring out things in kilograms, meters, and seconds, that means your answer will be in newtons. These are all um, intimately connected. Newtons is, yeah, like I just said. So um, if everything's in there, then that's fine. If you go outside of these with any of your units, you'll, you'll start getting um, strange answers because they're not made to go together. So um, stick, with, stick with those four. Um, two things we're going to talk about in this video is resultant forces and resolving forces. And um, neither of these concepts will be that um, new to you because um, resultant forces, that just means you add the forces together. Okay, so if you've got a force like this and you've got a force like that, then all you need to do is add those two together. And so you get this force and you put it onto the end of the other one and you get a resultant force that looks something like that. So a resultant force just means if you add all the forces together, what do you get? So um, that's resultant forces and resolving forces. What that means is that if you have a force like such, then, um, then if we resolve it into its component, so it has a, say, a horizontal component like that, and a vertical, not very good there, a vertical component like that. So there's a component there, and there's a component there. So we're resolving a force into its two pieces. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, and both of those skills are, um, are really required in, um, in dynamics. So um, let's just have a look at types of things you might have to do. So uh, here, uh, just, just a sort of like a little quick example. But say you have a force like that and a force like that at two different sort of angles. Let's just, it doesn't matter, I'm not going to do the question. Um, and let's just say that's, so that's 20 degrees in there. And let's just say that angle there is 30 degrees. Okay, so you've got two forces. And this force here is 5 newtons. And this one here is 4 newtons. So looking at that. So if we wanted to find the resultant force of those two, then there, there's a couple of ways to do it. And I'm not going to have time in this video to do it, but there's two ways how to add those. Firstly, you can add them uh, using like a triangular addition. And what we mean by that is the following. So if you have five newtons going that way, and then you have four newtons sort of going out that way, so I've got the diagram, four going that way, then when you add them together, then you'll get the resultant force of this one. So that's your R. We call that the resultant force when you add them together. And you could work out you know, what this angle is, you can work out what this angle is, etc., etc., And you can find the resultant force using that. In other words, you can find the magnitude of that, and you could find the, the overall angle because you've got, you know, so, so you can find out things like that. So you could use the cosine rule, for example. So the magnitude of R is equal to, you know, 5 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 4 times 5 um, times cos of, let's just call that, you know, alpha in there, cos alpha. Um, so you could use all this information to find out what the resultant force is equal to. And similarly, you could find the angle. So that's one way to do it. Um, but in this sort of example, it's a little messy. Um, the second way that you could do that, adding two forces together, is to break each. 
into its components. And this is often a, a quicker and easier way to do that, um, this particular way, because you can look at the 5 newton force. So if you've got the 5 newton force, and it's an angle of, what's the angle, 30 degrees. Oh, that's not very good. So, like that and that. so let's break it up into its horizontal and vertical components. You've got the 30 degrees here. Then we know that this component down here is 5 cos 30, and we know this component up here is 5 sine 30. And so we can rewrite that vector uh, instead of um, being 5 newtons there, we can rewrite that vector in i and j. So cos 30 is root 3 on 2, so that's 5 root 3 on 2i, plus sine 30 is half, plus 5 over 2j. And so we can rewrite that vector as that, and we can do a similar thing for the 4 newton force, and then just add the components together. I might just quickly do it just to show you what I mean. Uh, and then we've got the 4 newton force there, 4 newton force, and let's do its components. Now what is it? 20 degrees, so this is not going to be exact, but you get to... So that's 4 cos 20 down here, and this is 4 sine 20 up here, and so this, um, this vector is equal to 4 cos 20i plus 4 sine 20 j and so there's my two pieces so that's that one and that's that one there and so once they're in the components thing it's really easy to work with and so you can get a resultant force so your resultant force will be equal to this vector plus this vector so we just add the i component and add the j component and obviously if you had your calculator out you get cos 20 to figure out what it's equal to but just for the sake of this video um, it's just going to be like 5 root 3 over 2 plus 4 cos 20 i so sorry my son's just dying um, and yeah you just add the components add the i components and add the j components there you just add them together and that's the other way that you can find um, it's just vector addition what we learnt right from the start of this course so um, that's a bit about um, how to add um, and and that's basically all there is to um, to finding uh, add resultant forces so now let's just have a look at um, a different type of problem um, where we've got let's say vertical forces and horizontal forces which are different okay so let's say we have an upwards force I don't know what's happened there um, let's say we just have an upwards force of 4 newtons downwards force of 10 newtons a uh, force in this direction of 3 newtons and a direction in this way of 5 newtons and so let's have a look at what the resultant force here might be equal to um, so we're looking for our resultant force. Let's have a look at what happens in the I direction. We'll just define what the I direction is. Let's say that this is the I direction and this is the J direction. So in the I direction, let's have a look at what's happening here. In the I direction, we have three newtons in the positive direction and five newtons in the negative direction. So what we have is we have negative 2 newtons in the i direction. Okay. Looking at the j direction, looking at the j direction, in the positive j direction we have 4, in the negative we have 10, so we have a total of negative 6 newtons in the j direction. So therefore, my resultant force is equal to negative 2i minus 6 J. So that's your resultant force. In other words, if you wanted to have a look at it, um, then um, if you added all these forces together, you'd get negative 2i minus 6j. So you'd get some sort of vector looking like that if, you, um, if all those forces were put together. And that's basically um, how we work with vectors, how we add forces together, how we sort of look at each situation. 
In the next video, we're going to um, look more at uh, Newton's laws. Um, but basically, for this, just for this starter, you just need to be able to add forces together, so either using triangles or by the components, and also to resolve forces to break things up into their pieces. We'll see you in the next video.